Today's adventure starts at Mrs. Fig's magic school. The Queen bakes cakes. Hello, Mrs. Fig. Lovely autumn day, isn't it? Um, yes, wise old elf. Only problem is the apples are starting to fall. Wow, that was close. So far, I've been lucky. They've all missed my magic school. That one didn't miss. Oh, dear. My poor magic school. Broken. Well, you're a fairy. Can't you just mend it with magic? No. Magic always leads to trouble. You don't like magic, do you, Mrs Fig? That's right, Holly. I want to mend the school the normal, sensible, safe way by using a builder. Well, you're in luck. I'm a builder, but it won't be cheap. We're going to need bricks, cement, roof tiles. I know. We'll have a cake stall. The money we make from selling cakes will pay for the repairs. A cake stall? It sounds fun. Let's tell everyone to get baking. Daddy! Daddy! An apple fell on Mrs Fig's magic school. And now the school has a big hole in it. Oh, dear. That's a shame. Mrs Fig is asking everybody to bake cakes to raise money. Bake cakes? Uh, well, don't tell your mother about that. About what, darling? Mrs Fig is running a cake stall. Oh, how exciting. I'll bake some cakes. R really? There's no need. Mrs Fig needs them today. Then I'd better start straight away. Oh, no. What is it, Daddy? Your mother is not very good at baking cakes. Oh. She bakes horrible cakes and she gets very upset if anyone doesn't like them. dum de dum de dee dee doo That's odd. Who's in my kitchen? <gasps> the Queen baking cakes! Yes, Nanny Plum. Would you like to try a cake? Maybe later. Cakes! Cakes! The Queen's baking cakes! I know! We'll have to leave the country. Pack a bag, everyone. The Queen's cakes can't be that bad. They're worse than bad. They're... Cake time! Who wants to try my lovely cakes? Uh, um, um, uh, uh, I've got rock cakes, fudge cake and gingerbread. They look lovely. In fact, they look too good to eat. You don't want to eat them, do you? You think they're horrid. No, no, no. I can't wait to try them. Have a rock cake. Ow! Did you just say ow? No, I said ow. Oh. Is it nice? It's inedible. Uh, I mean, incredible. But maybe I'll save it for later. Try the fudge cake. Ah, uh, isn't it someone else's turn? Don't you want my fudge cake? Of course I do. What do you think? <coughs> Tasty? <coughs> Are you all right, Daddy? <coughs> What's he saying? I'm saying my mouth is stuck. Oh, I think his mouth is stuck shut. <laughs> oh, that was horrific. You think the fudge cake is too sticky, don't you? You hate it. No, no, of course not, darling. It's uh, amazing. Oh, good. Try the gingerbread. Dunk it in your coffee. That will make it all soft and yummy. Um, the coffee's just rolled off it. It's completely dry. Take a bite. You know, maybe I'll save this one for later, too. OK, well, I can't stand around chatting. I've got loads more cakes to bake. Rock-hard rock cakes, super sticky fudge, waterproof gingerbread. We'll have to warn the whole of the little kingdom. The Queen's baking cakes! <laughs> Baking cakes! Oh, no! I can't eat one of those cakes again. No one can eat them and survive. Hello! Cake time, everyone! Uh, yes, but you shouldn't have troubled yourself, Your Majesty. We already have lots of cake. You don't want my cakes? Oh, yes, we do. You think they're horrible, don't you? Of course we 
don't. Oh, good then. I'll put them here. That should raise lots of money to mend your school, Mrs Fig. Thank you, Your Majesty. Maybe I should have used magic to mend the school. It would have been less dangerous. Keep clear of the cakes. No one eat them. Ooh, cakes. Wait! Yow! What kind of a cake is that? It's a rock cake. Queen Thistle baked it. Oh, the queen baking again. The fudge cake glues your mouth shut. And the gingerbread is waterproof. Incredible. What can these things be made of? I want to do some tests on these cakes. This machine tests how strong things are. Let's start with something very weak, like this egg. The egg had a strength of one. Now let's try a brick. The brick had a strength of five. Now let's try the Queen's rock cake. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's reached eleven. Eleven? Nothing has gone to eleven before. Stand by, <gasps> the cake broke the machine. That cake is the strongest substance known to man. The fudge cake stuck Daddy's mouth shut. Hmm. Let's test how sticky it really is. Stop, wise old elf! Don't touch the fudge cake! You'll be stuck to it forever! OK, let's just say the Queen has created the stickiest substance known to man. What about the gingerbread? Daddy dipped it in his coffee and it stayed dry. Let's see how waterproof it is. Amazing! The most waterproof substance known to man. These cakes must be locked away. They must never be eaten. Not eaten, no. But maybe they can be used for something else. I do hope I've made enough cakes. What if they need more for the cake stall? Trust me, they won't want any more cake. More cake, please. Really? Yes, as many as you can bake. And fudge cake. And gingerbread. Oh, goody. They love my cakes. I'd better get baking. Who's eating all these cakes? Eating them? No one's eating them. So why do you want more? These cakes are the perfect building material. The rock cakes are super strong bricks. We're gluing them together using the super sticky fudge cake. And then the super waterproof gingerbread makes great roof tiles. Amazing! But of course, you must never tell the Queen. Never tell the Queen what? Uh... Oh, Mrs Fig, you've mended the school. So you managed to raise enough money by selling my cakes. Um, let's just say your cakes were a great help. Yes, three cheers for Queen Thistle. Hip, hip, hooray! Hip, hip, hooray! Hip, hip, hooray! Hip, hip. Hang on. These bricks look just like my rock cakes. Uh, yes. And this cement is just like my fudge cake. It is my fudge cake. Oh, no! At least she hasn't spotted the roof. And the roof tiles are my gingerbread. You didn't want to eat my cakes. Well, they're not really for eating, are they, darling? Not if you want to survive. I thought everybody liked my cakes, but nobody did. I wish I'd never baked a single cake. <laughs> But, Mummy, if we hadn't baked any cakes, we wouldn't have mended the school. Holly is right. It's only because of your baking the magic school is fixed. I suppose that's true. Hooray for Queen Thistle! Hooray! In fact, we could do with some cakes to finish the chimney, if you don't mind baking some more. Could you make some bricks for my house? I want to build a patio. Do you do paving slabs? Well, I suppose I could. Do you do drain pipes? Do you do MDF? Everyone loves my mummy's cakes.
Today's adventure starts at the little castle. Big Bad Barry. <laughs> I say, I'm getting a little hungry. Me too. I think I fancy fish and chips. We don't have any fish, Your Majesty. What? No fish? But I can magic up some fish fingers. Yum, yum. I like fish fingers. No, no. I want fresh fish. Fresh from the lake with chips. I know. Ben's dad has a fishing boat. Then we shall go and see Ben's dad. It's time we put the boat away for the winter, Ben. I'm pleased Bunty has made it through the summer with no accidents. What kind of accidents? The kind where the boat gets eaten. Eaten? Yes. Have I never told you the story of Big Bad Barry the fish? No. It was a dark and stormy night. I was sailing in my favourite boat when suddenly... A fish! A fish, Mr Elf! What's that? I want a fish for dinner, with chips. Oh, so we'd like you to take us out on the lake to catch one. I was just putting Bunty away for the winter. Who's Bunty? My boat. Well, one more trip won't do any harm, will it? I'd rather not. Um, she might get wet. Mr Elf, your king commands you. OK, climb aboard. <laughs> You'll have to leave your wands here. Magic isn't allowed on elf boats. And, and where else? <laughs> Let's get going. I'll do the steering. Hang on a minute. You might be king on land, Your Majesty, but on this boat, I'm the captain. So I'm in charge. All right, Captain. As long as I get a fish. Holly and Ben, wind the engine. Aye, aye, Captain. King Thistle, take the wheel. Okie dokie, Captain. Ho oh, ho, this is fun. Turn ship to starboard. What? <sighs> Turn right. Why didn't you say so? At sea, we don't say left and right. We say port and starboard. Isn't that a bit silly? <laughs> we'll fish from the stern. Where's that? <sighs> the back of the boat. Come with me. Fishing is a tricky business. You must have the right type of bait. What kind of bait are we using today? Stale bread. Stale bread? Who likes stale bread? Should we put some butter on it, Dad? And jam? Yes. We're not going to catch anything with stale bread, old boy. Stick a bit of jam on it. Stop! I'm the captain, so while we're aboard Bunty, we do what I say. Aye, aye, aye captain. captain! Now be quiet. Fish don't like noise. Very bossy, isn't he? This is so exciting. Shh, everybody. Now we wait. Are you sure this is right? Of course I'm sure. Come on, let me have a go. Fine, you'll see. It takes time to catch a fish. I've caught a fish. Holly, grab the net. Get ready to catch it. Well done, Daddy. Wow, it's big. It's a whopper, all right. And I caught it. It's only a little tiddler. It must be the biggest fish in the lake. It's too small. That was the biggest fish I've ever seen. I've seen bigger. Much, much bigger. Really? Really. It was many years ago when I first met Big Bad Barry. Big Bad Barry? Who's that? Only the biggest, hugest, most giganticest fish the world has ever seen. No! It was a dark and stormy night. I was out sailing in my favourite boat, Hilda, when I first saw Big Bad Barry. I knew straight away I had to catch him. I had to be the fisherman who took him home for the biggest fish dinner in history. 
I tried several different baits before I found what Barry liked. Cheese. Cheese? Cheese. I put a bit of cheese on the line, and Barry was hooked straight away. The only thing was, he was stronger than my old boat Hilda was. Bad Barry dragged my poor boat Hilda all over the lake. And when he'd finished that, he ate her. He ate Hilda? It sounds horrid. It was. So you built Bunty to replace Hilda? No. First, there was Doris. Then Peggy. There was Abigail, Fifi and Trixabel. Not forgetting Sabrina, Vicky and Miss Boo Boo. Barry ate them all. <gasps> I tried to catch Barry so many times, but he was always too strong. So that's where all the cheese went. In the end, I gave up. Big Bad Barry is still out there, somewhere. Ooh. Incredible! I have come to a royal decision. We must catch Big Bad Barry and have him with chips. Hooray! No, we mustn't. I don't want to lose another boat. Not Bunty. Anyway, there's no cheese on the boat. I won't allow it. Barry can smell cheese a mile away, even a mild cheddar. Good. I've got some cheese in my picnic hamper. We can use that. Ah! Cheese on board! Quick, get rid of it before it's too late. What did you do that for? I told you, it's dangerous to have cheese on board. Luckily, I also brought a nice Stilton cheese we can tempt Barry with. No, I refuse to help. Then we'll do it without you. I'm taking charge. Hooray! Ah, it's mutiny. Mutiny on the bounty. We'll catch this Barry and have him with chips. Ben, take the wheel. Aye, aye, Captain. Holly, hold the net. Aye, aye. Here, Barry, Barry. Barry. Come on, Barry. Where are you? It's not working. Here, Barry. Come on, boy. Oh, if we're going to catch Big Bad Barry, let's do it properly. Yes! You must do what I say as soon as I say it. Aye, aye, aye Captain. Captain! Big Bad Barry is too big for that rod. We'll use this rod. Wow! You wanted to meet Big Bad Barry? Here's your chance. Excellent! Now we wait, but not for long. <laughs> Eating him for weeks. He's got the cheese. Start the engine. Full sail. We're not going anywhere. Yes, we are. Bad Barry is pulling us backwards. I'm on. We've got him. We've got him. I think he's got us, Daddy. Holly's right. We should never have tried to catch Bad Barry. He's too big. He's too bad. We have to let him go. Never. Aha! He's given up. I don't think so. He's eating the line. Ah, uh, then he can have it. I give in. Sorry we tried to catch you, Barry. No hard feelings, eh? <laughs> ah! He's eating Bunty! <laughs> Launch the lifeboat! <laughs> Abandon ship! Women, children and kings first! Oh, Bunty! Hello, everyone. The chips are ready. Where's the fish? <laughs> oh! What's going on? Big Bad Barry is eating Bunty. Yum, yum, yum. Oh, dear. Do you think Barry would like some chips with that? I think he's full. Alas, poor Bunty. I knew her well. Right. What should we have for dinner, then? I think I'd like fish fingers. With 
and chips. <laughs> 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 Today's adventure starts at Mrs. Witch's house. The Witch Competition. Thank you for helping tidy my house, Nanny Plum. No problem, Mrs. Witch. My goodness, what a lot of cobwebs. Let's magic them away. Oh, me. I don't know what I'd do without you, Nanny. But, Mrs Witch, why can't you just use your own magic to tidy your house? The thing is, I don't do much magic these days. I'm retired. Meow. Still got your mangy old cat, I see. Don't be rude about Moggy. I say cat, but it's just a bag of fleas, really. Leave him alone. I'm warning you. And he's smelly. <laughs> <gasps> Mrs Witch, you've turned Nanny to stone So you can do magic Only if I'm cross Nanny was being very rude about my cat Can you turn Nanny back? If she says sorry Sorry And say mm. sorry to Moggy Sorry, Moggy <laughs> Oof, I forgot she's so touchy about her cat Hello, are you Mrs Witch? That's me. I'm Wendy Witch. Hello, Wendy Witch. I'm so excited to be standing here with you. You're famous. Am I? I was brought up on stories of you doing the fastest spells in the West. That was all a long time ago. I'm retired now. And what a lovely witchy house. I can't believe I'll be living here. Uh, what was that? I'll be living in your house. But there's only room in this house for one witch. Yes. Now you're retired, you'll be going to the old witch's home. You'll be very happy there. It's full of other old witches watching telly all day. Uh, you know, when I said I was retired, I meant I'm not retired. Goodbye. <laughs> that was close. Um, sorry to bother you again, but since there's only room for one witch around here, we'll have a witch competition. The winner stays, the loser goes. Oh, yes, of course. A witch competition needs a judge. Someone important. Uh, my daddy is a king. Is that important enough? A king will do nicely. Let's go and meet this daddy of yours. Hello, Your Majesty. Ah! I'm Wendy Witch. Oh, hello, Wendy Witch. We're having a witch competition and we need someone important and wise to be the judge. That'll be me. I'm very important and wise. If Mrs Witch loses, she'll have to leave her house. Daddy, you have to make sure Mrs Witch wins. I'm sorry, Holly, but I'm the judge and I have to be fair and above board. I suppose there's a first time for everything. When does the competition start? At high noon. I haven't got a chance against Wendy Witch. I haven't been in a witch competition for years. What happens in a witch competition? There's a spell contest, broomstick riding and jam making. Well, your jam smells quite nice. See, I've lost my touch. Which jam is supposed to be horrible? Don't worry, we'll help you make it horrible. <laughs> what if you put in some snail slime? Snail slime? Yes, that could do it. And some worm poo? Yes, that would make it taste awful. You see, you can win. Now let's tackle the broomstick riding. I haven't ridden my broom in years. It's forgotten all its training. <laughs> yeah, boy. Good broom. Oh, come here, you silly old stick. <laughs> oh, dear. Let's try spells. Mrs Witch, you did the fastest spells in the West. Right, Mrs Witch. Turn these cans into frogs. <laughs> I'm trying. But I can't do it. 
I'm afraid she's past it. Past it? She can't even turn a can into a frog. She might have been good at magic once, but now she's a bit of a has-been. Has-been? I'll show you. <laughs> <gasps> Mrs Witch, you turned Nanny into a frog. That's because Nanny got me annoyed. <laughs> Oof! If you can do magic like that in the competition, you'll be fine. So just remember to get cross with Wendy Witch. But she's so friendly and nice. It's your only chance to win. OK, I'll try to be cross. It's high noon. Let the witch competition begin. First, jam making. Why are they all staring at me? You're the judge, darling. They're waiting for you to taste the witch's jam. Oh, what's in it? Slug, mostly, with a hint of bat and spider eggs for crunch. Ew, that's the most disgusting thing I've ever ever tasted. Thank you. No, my jam, Your Majesty. Yes. Um, why should I have all the fun? Isn't it someone else's go? Daddy, you're the judge, so you must taste both jams. Of course I must. Lucky me. Oh, they both taste equally revolting. So, the jam making is a draw. Hooray! And now, broomstick flying. Yeehaw! That was really good. Ooh. Now it's Mrs. Witch's turn. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Right, she's held on. Yeehaw! She's riding the broom. Stick riding a draw. Now for the spell contest. Mrs. Witch, where are you going? To the old witch's home. I can't win a spell contest. Yes, you can. You turned Nanny to stone. And you turned her into a frog. Well, Nanny Plum makes me so cross. Just remember to be cross with Wendy Witch. But she's so polite and charming. She wants to put you in the old witch's home. And live in your house. You're right. Remember I'm cross. Remember I'm cross. Let the spells begin. The witch that turns the other to stone is the winner. Remember I'm cross. Remember, I'm cross. Mrs Witch, it's been such a thrill to be in a competition with you. Remember, I'm... Oh, thank you, dear. You're so nice. <gasps> She's turned Mrs Witch to stone. That's it. I've won. I'll be the Little Kingdom's witch. I'll really enjoy working with you, King Thistle. Uh, working with me? Oh, yes. I've got big plans for the Little Kingdom. Oh, dear. She sounds like a bit of a bossy boots. Meow. And Mrs Witch's mangy old cat will have to go. Did you see Mrs Witch move? She can't move. She's been turned to stone. He really is a flea-bitten old thing. He smells awful. Wow, Mrs. Witch turned the other witch to stone. So, I suppose Mrs. Witch is the winner. Yay! We knew you could do it. Uh, shouldn't you turn Wendy Witch back now? She was very rude about my Moggy. But if she says sorry... Sorry. And sorry to Moggy. Sorry, Moggy. <sighs> Thanks. You're just amazing, Mrs Witch. I've never seen anyone break out of a stone spell before. And you're a very polite and clever young witch, mostly. Well, as they say, this town ain't big enough for the both of us. So I'll be moving along. Bye! I'm glad 
Mrs Witch one. The Little Kingdom wouldn't be the same without Mrs Witch. Yes. Mind you, Wendy Witch did have a point about the cat. It does rather smell and it's... What was that? It, uh, is a most lovely pussycat. Thank you, King Thistle. I do love my Moggy. Meow. Today's adventure starts at the Little Castle. King Thistle's birthday. Happy birthday! Happy birthday, Daddy! Hmm. What is it, darling? I don't want a birthday. You don't want a birthday? No. Why on earth not? I don't like my birthday. Every year we make a big song and dance about the fact that I'm getting older. But we always celebrate your birthday. The elves hold a big party with music, dancing and fireworks. It's so much fun. Yes. Well, today is going to be different. No birthday party. Da, 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 da. Happy birthday, Your Majesty. Here's your cake. Shush, Nanny Plum. Sorry there aren't enough candles. There should be one for every year, but we need... Stop going on about how old I am. But, darling, you're only... And no cake. Take it away. No cake? I've baked loads of cakes for the party. I don't care. No cakes and no birthday. Oh, I suppose I'll just have to eat all the cakes myself. Why doesn't Daddy want a birthday? He doesn't like getting older. Who does? I do. Oh, well. I'd better cancel the fireworks. <laughs> I can't wait for the king's birthday party. Me too. We've got a really big firework to let off. Yes, it's as big as a carrot. Ho, ho, ho. And there'll be music, dancing and cakes. Everyone loves King Thistle's birthday party. Firework delivery for King Thistle's birthday party. Oh, Ben, there's not going to be a party. No, no party? King Thistle has decided he doesn't like getting older. Who does? I do. So, there won't be any fireworks now. Or music. Or dancing. <sighs> We'd better take this delivery back to the elf tree. Can I stay here with Holly? OK. Bye, Dad. See you later. If we could cheer King Thistle up, then maybe he'd want a party. Good idea, Ben. I could do a magic spell to cheer the king up. Really? Will that work? Of course. But how do you cheer people up with magic? I'll show you. Abracadabra, abracadab, make Queen Thistle all cheered up. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> Easy peasy. <laughs> Look how happy the Queen is! <laughs> Make it stop! <laughs> oh dear! <laughs> Mummy can't stop laughing! Please! <laughs> oh! That was horrible! I'm not sure about that! You were very happy! Yes, a little too happy! Maybe we won't use magic to cheer the king up. Perhaps we could cheer King Thistle up another way. How? My dad always likes talking about when he was a boy. Does he? So, if we ask your dad about when he was young, that might cheer him up. Good idea, Ben. <sighs> Hello, Daddy. Hello, Holly. Hello, Ben. Dad? Hmm? What was it like when you were a boy? Why would you want to know that? We're interested. Yes. I can't remember. It was a long time ago. You must remember something. Well, oh, yes. When I was a boy... Were there dinosaurs? Dinosaurs? Yes. Dinosaurs with big pointy teeth. No! How old do you think I am? What was it like before the telephone was invented? Did you live in a cave, Daddy? No, I didn't. And that's quite enough questions about when I was young, thank you. But we're interested. Well, I'm not. Now, please leave me alone. Huh. All right. Dad? 
Daddy seems more sad than ever. Yes. Now we'll never have a party. What about if we ask the wise old elf for advice? Yes, he's very wise. And he's old. He'll know what to do. Hello, Holly. Hello, Ben. Hello, Hello wise, wise old, old elf. elf. Have you heard? King Thistle's not having a birthday party. Ah, yes. After all our hard work arranging everything. And the elf band had composed a special song, too. Listen. Oompa, oompa. Old King Thistle is a very old king. And he's one year older today. Old King Thistle, he's old and grey. Happy, happy, happy birthday. That's very nice. But Daddy doesn't want to have his birthday because he thinks he's too old. King Thistle's not old. I've got T-shirts older than him. Really? I'm sure the king just needs cheering up. We've tried that. It didn't work. So I suppose there won't be a party after all. No music. No dancing. No fireworks. Hmm. The king likes surprises, doesn't he? Yes. We can give the king a surprise party. But he doesn't want a birthday party. Ah, but it won't be a birthday party. There'll be music and dancing and fireworks and no one will say the word birthday. Gosh, that's very clever. It's brilliant. Come on, Ben. We need to get ready for the party. <laughs> Calling all elves. We need to arrange the king's party. Right, right on. Hello, Daddy. I've got something for you. What's this? Open it and see. I said no birthday cards. It's not a birthday card. This is just a card to say what a lovely daddy you are. Oh, thank you, Holly. And here's a present. It's not a birthday present, is it? No, King Thistle. Are you sure? Sure. A toy robot. Thank you, Ben. I made it myself. And here's your cake. It's not a birthday cake, is it? Absolutely not. This is just an ordinary cake. The taste is completely different. Oh, good. <laughs> Delicious. Hmm. <laughs> Cards, presents, cake. And this is nothing to do with my birthday? No. Well, I suppose it's not really a birthday then. As long as the elf band doesn't turn up. There's one more surprise, Daddy. Oh, I love surprises. You have to close your eyes. OK. You can open your eyes now. Surprise! I said no birthday party! It's not a birthday party, darling. It's just a surprise party. Oh, well then, I suppose... Happy birth... <gasps> I mean congratulations, Your Majesty, on being such an excellent king. Well done. Oh, thank you. And now for the giant firework. It's as big as a carrot. Ha ah. ha! <laughs> I love fireworks. And now, Your Majesty, the elf band will sing a special song in your honor. Oompa, oompa, old King Thistle is a very old king And he's one year older today Old King Thistle, he's old and grey Happy, happy, happy birthday Er, uh, of course, the song isn't actually about you it's about a different king, Your Majesty. A king far away from here. Whose birthday it is today. In that case, 
It was a very nice song. Today's adventure starts at the little castle. Journey to the centre of the earth. Hello, Mrs. Fothering Girl. Have you come to teach Daisy and Poppy? Yes, Nanny Plum. And this time, I am not going to let Daisy and Poppy get the better of me. That's the spirit. She's doomed. Mrs. Fotheringill is here to give the twins their lesson. Are you sure you really want to do that, Mrs. Fotheringill? We'd quite understand if you... Oh, no, I have thought long and hard about it. And what happened last time was not the twins' fault. It was my fault. But the twins zap you to the South Pole. Only because I didn't give the little darlings enough trust. If you trust a child, they will repay your trust. <laughs> now, Daisy and Poppy, let's start this lesson as we mean to go on. <laughs> let's just open our picture books and... <laughs> what are they doing to her up there? The last time she taught the twins, they made her disappear. All they found was her shoe. Disappear! Now, Daisy, I know the Deep down, you're good, and you'd never make me disappear. Disappear. <laughs> ah, good. They've gone quiet. Quiet isn't good. It means they're up to something. I hope Mrs. Fotheringill is all right. <gasps> all that's left of her is her shoes. <laughs> Daisy, Poppy, where is Mrs. Fotheringill? Gone. All gone. Gone? My goodness! The twins are so wild and naughty. Where do they get it from? Grandpapa Thistle is here. There's your answer. Hello, everyone. Hello, Dad. Grandpapa! 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 <laughs> Hello, my dears. I was just passing and I asked myself, why don't I take my grandchildren for a day out? Hooray! Hang on, Dad. Where were you thinking of taking the children? I thought we'd visit a volcano. Um, I don't think climbing up a volcano is such a good idea. We're not going to climb up it. Oh, good. We're climbing down inside it. What? You can't take children into a volcano. It's too dangerous. Is it? All right, then. How about lion taming? No. What's wrong with a nice walk in the meadow? I bet the twins would like to go down a volcano. Yes, Grandpa -pa, -pa, pa. The twins are in disgrace today. They have been very, very naughty. Ah, what have the little darlings done? They've only made their teacher disappear. Oh, that nice Mrs. Fotheringill. Gone. All gone. Daisy, Poppy, where have you sent your teacher? Down. Down to the kitchen. Down, down. Down to the cellar. Very down. You know what? I think Daisy and Poppy have sent Mrs. Fotheringill to the centre of the earth. Centre of the <laughs> We have to rescue her. Well, that's settled where we're going for our day out then. To the centre of the earth. <laughs> I saw the film of Journey to the Centre of the Earth. There were dinosaurs and lost tribes and everything. Dinosaurs? In the centre of the Earth? What nonsense. It's true. I saw it on the telly. How do we get to the centre of the Earth? We could just take the stairs. Stairs? Yes. There are secret stairs in the little castle that go down, down, down. Ooh. The stairs start from a secret entrance in the kitchen. 
we just have to press this large button. Oh, I've always wondered what that button was for. I built these stairs when I built the little castle. I asked myself, why have stairs only to the cellar? Why not to the center of the earth? You're a bit crazy, aren't you? I'm not crazy. I'm completely bonkers. Look, there's some writing on the wall. It's runic writing written by dwarves. What does it say? Nanny, can you translate it? Hmm. It says, take these stairs down to the centre of the earth. At the bottom, you'll see dinosaurs. Does it really say dinosaurs? No, I made that bit up. But there will be dinosaurs. You'll see. <sighs> Are we nearly there yet? No, Holly. We have to go past the roots of the plants, the drains, the giant spider caves. It's a long way to the centre of the earth. So how many steps do we have to go down? 48 million trillion thousand. Oh, no. My feet are tired already. That's why I got the dwarves to put a lift in. Doors opening. Hold tight, everyone. The lift does go rather fast. Doors closing. Going down. Yeah! Oh, my tummy! This is fun! Brilliant! Center of the Earth. Doors opening. Here we are, the center of the Earth. It's a huge cave. It's full of trees and giant mushrooms. Yep, that's how it was on telly. Well, one thing that's not here, dinosaurs. <laughs> There's one. Oh. See? The telly is always right. But now that we're here, how do we find Mrs Fotheringill? Gaston can sniff Mrs Fotheringill's shoes and find her. Brilliant, Ben. <laughs> Find Mrs. Fotheringill. <laughs> Good boy, Gaston. <laughs> I wonder where we'll find the Lost Tribe. Lost Tribe? What nonsense. Whoa, look at that. A Lost Tribe. Told you. They're elves and fairies, just like us. Halt. Who journeys through our land? We come from the surface of the mighty Earth. We welcome you, surface dwellers. We thank you, O oh Lord of the Underground. Nanny, why are they speaking in that funny way? That's how they speak on telly. We bid you greetings. Uh, actually, we've come to get Mrs Fotheringill. Ah, the one we call Teacher. Yes, that'll be her. Good morning, children. My name is Mrs Fotheringill. Hello, Mrs Fotheringill. Oh, hello, everybody. We're here to rescue you. And we've brought your shoes. Oh, my shoes. It's good to have them back. It's been very nice and peaceful down here. A bit like a holiday. But I will be glad to be back in my own little home. Fothergill! Fothergill! Ah, Daisy! Poppy! Ah! On the other hand, I think I'll stay here. Young lady, do you want to be rescued or not? Oh, I don't know. It's so hard to decide. I'll make it easy for you. Yes? As queen, I command you to come back. Oh, well, in that case... Right. Mission accomplished. Let's go home. Back to the lift, everyone. Oh, no. Not that horrid lift again. My poor tummy. There is another way up. We can go by balloon. <laughs> Just need a basket. Abracadabra. All aboard. Goodbye, people of the underground. We bid you farewell, surface dwellers. See ya. Oh, floating gently up in a balloon sounds lovely and relaxing. It certainly will be lovely and relaxing. If you can call hurtling through a volcano relaxing. Volcano? Of course. The volcano will take us straight up to the surface. Dad, I said no volcanoes. Oh, we'll be fine as long as the volcano doesn't erupt. Whoop! 
Oops, seems to be erupting. Oh well, here we go. Next stop, the little castle. Now, Daisy and Poppy, say sorry to Mrs. Fotheringill for causing her so much trouble. Sorry! And do you promise to be good next time I teach you? We promise. Oh, they are sweet, really, aren't they? She never learns. She's doomed. <laughs> Today's adventure starts at the Little Castle. The Wand Factory. Ah, oh, Strawberry. Isn't it a lovely morning? Yes, Nanny Plum. Hi, Holly. Hi, Strawberry. Have you come to join us for wand practice? No. I came to see if Holly wanted to play. But now you can join us for wand practice. Uh, but... I don't know where my wand is. You're holding it. Oh, yes. So I am. Come along. You know how much fun wand practice is. Ugh. Right. Now you can practice lifting rocks with magic. Up and down. Up and down. Up and down. down. Up and down. down. Very good. Keep it going. Up. And down. down. Up and down. down. Oh. Hi, Holly. Hi, Strawberry. Do you want to play football? We can't. We have to do wand practice. Up and down. down. Up and down. Aren't you supposed to be gentle with your wands? It's OK. Wands are very strong. You don't want to break them. Don't be silly. They never break. Show him, Holly. Hit your wand on that rock. OK. <gasps> oh, dear. Holly, Strawberry, how's wand practice going? Uh, not very well. Holly's broken her wand. How did that happen? I was waving it very gently and she bashed it on a rock. That wasn't very clever. Sorry, Nanny. Not to worry. We'll just get it mended. Hooray! Are you going to mend it with magic, Nanny? Oh, no. I can't mend it. Why not? Wands make magic, but magic can't make wands. It's like chickens and eggs. Chickens make eggs, but eggs don't make chickens. But eggs do make chickens. Whatever. The important thing is, I can't mend wands by magic. So, who can mend it? The elves that made it. Elves? Do elves make wands? Of course they do. Everyone knows that. Elves are very good at making wands. And we're elves. <laughs> <laughs> to the elf factory. Look, Nanny, wands are magic. And elves don't do magic. Elves don't use the wands, Holly. They just make them. Good morning. Can I help you? Um, I've broken my wand. She bashed it on a rock. One moment, please. Wise old elf. Wise old elf, please report to reception immediately. Ah, Princess Holly. What can I do for you? Holly's broken her wand. She bashed it on a rock. I see. Not to worry. We'll just mend it. Follow me. Now you will need these hard hats. Ooh. <laughs> we'll be taking the train. Ooh. All aboard. Hold tight, everyone. We're going deep down. How deep down? Level 500, the Wand Factory. Ah! <laughs> level 500? It's the deepest level there is. Why is the Wand Factory so deep underground? Because wands are magic. And elves don't like 
magic. So we built the one factory as deep underground as possible. <laughs> oh, my tummy. Now, what's wrong with your wand? It broke itself. She bashed it on a rock. Yes, yes, but we need to find out exactly what's wrong with your wand. The X-ray shows it needs a new stick and a cog service. This way, this is the stick house, where we grow wooden sticks for wands. But there are loads of sticks just lying around in the meadow. Ah, but the stick for a wand must be specially grown. And made from the right type of tree. Correct. Nanny Plum. The wood for my wand comes from a plum tree because I am Nanny Plum. The wood for your wand, Holly, should come from a... Holly tree! Exactly. So, Strawberry, what tree does your wand come from? Um, it must come from a strawberry tree. Oh. Let's see how that feels. Hmm, it's a bit big. It just needs a little trim. This stage of wand repair is a mixture of woodwork and gardening. Is my wand mended now? I'm not yet, Princess Holly. We need to mend the head. Follow me. This is the clockwork room. Spinny Ickle Poo Clam, please. Spinny Ickle Poo Clam. Wooble Cone. Wooble Cone. It all looks very complicated. Bending a wand head is a mixture of surgery and watchmaking. Ah! The Fidge Fudge Rotter Whistle Stick. Whistle Stick. <laughs> Interesting. That doesn't sound right. Very good. Hooray! Can we go home now? Not yet, Nanny Plum. Holly's wand needs testing. To the testing room. The wand testing room. It is the safest place to do magic in the kingdom. Why do you need a special room to do magic? We don't want the magic leaking out and causing trouble. Where's the fun in that? Magic is not meant to be fun. Safe and sensible magic is what we do here. What's he doing? He's setting up the testing robot to do a magic spell. What's that? Lemonade! We're going to test the wand by turning the lemonade into something else. Is it going to turn into a golden coach? Or a monster with a hundred eyes and three legs? <laughs> Wait and see. <coughs> the lemonade has turned into water. Why would you want to do that? That's not magic. It's very sensible magic. It's rubbish magic. Well, what would you turn it into? How about this? Ah! You did magic outside the test room. Oh, it's a lemon. I meant to turn it into a frog. Nanny Plum. My wand's not working right. It's rattling. Oh, I see what you mean. That doesn't sound right. Hmm. When did you last have this wand serviced? Ten years ago. Wands should be serviced once a year. Here, try that. <laughs> yes, that's much better. Nanny, you turned the wise old elf into a frog. 
So I did. Are you going to turn him back again? Oh, I suppose I'll have to. Silly old elf, back to yourself. Very good. Your wand seems to be working perfectly. Don't wait ten years before getting it serviced again. Yes, wise old elf. Sorry. Thank you for mending my wand, wise old elf. You're welcome, Princess Holly. <laughs> it's good to have you back again, wand. I promise to take special care of you from now on. Yes. Don't bash it on a rock. I won't. <laughs> <laughs>